counsel? Thank you, your honor. Mr. Moslehi, where we left off, we were talking about the September 2000 video that you shot of Gavin and Michael Jackson. Now, my last question really deals with the, dealt more with the subject, what the individual subjects of that video were doing. First of all, let me ask you, who were the individual subjects in that video? Mr. Jackson. Yes. Gavin, I believe there was a shot of three of them, with Star, the brother. All right. Anybody else who appeared in that video? Not that I remember. And in terms of what Mr. Jackson was doing in that video, who decided that, what he was doing, in terms of whether he was standing in a place, walking, that kind of thing? Well, Mr. Jackson asked me to shoot some footage, and while he was walking with Gavin, I will decide whether to get an over-the-shoulder shot, which is a back shot, or run in the front and get a front shot. Okay. I understand that you were in charge of shooting the photography, the video, and that you made a decision about camera angles, right? Sure. And but in terms of what Mr. Jackson was doing when you shot those photographs, did you direct him, or did Mr. Jackson do that on his own? You mean the video, right? Yes. What he was doing. He was walking with Gavin, I guess. Did you understand my question? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who made that decision, what Mr. Jackson was doing, what he did in that video? Who decided? Himself. Mr. Jackson himself. So you didn't tell him, go stand over there. And now I want you to walk across. No. Okay. He decided. Let's talk about the second video. You mentioned that was in October of the same year, is that right? 2000? As I remember, yes. Who were the subjects of that video? Well, the video was a pilot. A pilot is like a little sample of an idea. Mr. Jackson, well, I had a meeting with Mr. Jackson, and he informed me that he likes to do a program called, Neverland Channel. Okay. Which is like. So this was a little pilot. Objection. I don't think the witness completed his response, your honor. Then I believe we were getting non-responsive. But. Well, you can ask him another question. Go ahead. All right. So going back to my original question, who were the subjects of that video? The host of the video was Star, Gavin's brother. Okay, and who else appeared in that video? Some other kids, including Gavin, and some animals. How long did that video take to shoot? A good 16-hour day it was. 16 hours? Yeah, one day. Did Star exhibit any natural talent in terms of his ability to host this program? Natural talent, meaning? Talent. Was he be able to do this right, or? Correct. Not really. Tell me what you mean. Well, first of all, dealing with kids and animal in production is really tough. Uh-huh. But when you deal with both of them, is just another situation that it's really tough to shoot. Star did not have enough, I guess, rehearsal or talent to do this video right, so we had to take a lot of takes and that kind of thing. Is that what? Yeah, that's the question. For instance, how many takes would it take? How many different takes would you run before you got a good shot of Star doing what you wanted him to do? Well, I, if I remember correctly, I never ended up getting a really good shot that I was looking for. But it would take like 15 takes, maybe, just to get a little piece so I can probably fix it in editing and put a piece together. Alright, what were Star's shortcomings, if you could characterize them, in his ability to be the host of this program? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. You may answer. May I answer? You may. Well, the way he was basically acting in front of a camera, and, you know, just like his skills, I guess. It wasn't, it wasn't professional. Okay. Were you the producer of this particular video? Yes, I was. Okay. Were there any other individuals who were involved in this, other than yourself? Crew-wise? Like other. Any fashion? Yes. Was there a crew? Yes, I hired a crew to shoot this. What about in the production of it? Was there anybody else who was involved in the production of it? Well, production is like really the crew who shoot the footage, our sound, that kind of stuff. Is that what your question? I mean pre-production. Oh, pre-production. Production or post-production. Anybody else involved in any production aspect? Well, the pre-production was mostly me and Mr. Jackson. Okay. Production was me and my crew. 
Okay. And post-production was me. Okay. Was Frank Cassio involved in this production at all? Yes, he was. In what fashion? Co-producer. And what does that mean? Like somebody who coordinates things. For example, he would practice with the talent, in this case star, go through his lines. That kind of thing. When you say Mr. Jackson helped you with pre-production, what did you mean by that? As I said, we had a meeting with, I had a meeting with Mr. Jackson, and Mr. Jackson explained to me what he wants to create for this look, or for the story of it. So that's part of the pre-production. Okay. Did you go through what was going to be said by Star or the individuals who were appearing? With Mr. Jackson? Yes. I, I don't think so. Okay. Did you go through what the individual shoots would involve? Any specifics about what the program, that program or pilot would be about? We covered certain style of the coverage, if I remember correctly. Okay. With Mr. Jackson. Who is Frank Cassio? Frank is a friend, associate of Mr. Jackson. Do you know Frank Cassio? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? I believe I saw him at the tour, which was 1996. I'm sorry? In 1996, Mr. Jackson did a tour. And if I remember correctly, Frank was there. Where was that tour? It was a world tour. Were you present during the entire tour? Yes, I was. And where did that world tour go? We went to a lot of different countries. I would say 40, 50 countries. 40, 50 countries. How long did the tour take? It was a year, well, eight months in a year and a half period. Was Mr. Cassio there the entire time? On and off. What percentage of time would you say he was on the tour with Mr. Jackson? I would say maybe 30%. All right. I'd like to show you some photographs at this time. If I may approach, your honor. Yes. All right. Mr. Moslehi, I show you People's Exhibit 338. Can you identify that for me, please? These are the Arviso kids, or Star, Gavin and I believe Develin. All right. I show you People's Exhibit 844. Can you identify that for me, please? Mr. Jackson and Frank. Did you take this photograph? I believe I did, yes. When was that photograph taken? If I remember correctly, December, November of 2002. People's Exhibit 27. Do you recognize that individual? Yes. Who is that? I believe his name is Christian Robinson. People's Exhibit 41, can you identify that individual for me? I believe he's Marlon Brando's son, Miko Brando. Okay. People's Exhibit 39, can you identify that individual? I believe he's Joe Marcus, the property manager. Property manager for where? Neverland. People's Exhibit 42, have you ever met this individual? Yes. His name is Stuart Backham, sick. Something like that. Okay. He was a spokesman of Mr. Jackson for a short period of time. Do you recognize this individual in Exhibit Number 23, People's Exhibit 23? I believe he's Brad Miller. Okay. People's Exhibit 18, do you recognize that individual? Ronald Conitzer. People's Exhibit 17, can you identify that one for me? Dieter Ron, Weisner. People's Exhibit 19? I believe Vinny Amen. People's Exhibit 16? Mark Schaffel. People's Exhibit 845 appears to be a photograph of a number of individuals. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. And what is it a photograph of? Mark Schaffel, Mr. Jackson, and I believe that individual in the back is Rudy. I'm not sure about his last name. Provencio. Do you know the other two individuals in the photograph? No, I don't. Okay. People's Exhibit 846 appears to be a similar photograph. Can you identify that for me? Yes. Michael Jackson, Nick Carter, Frank, Schaffel. Frank Cassio? Frank Cassio, or Schaffel, and Rudy. Okay. And the other two individuals who you didn't know? I didn't. Okay. One final photograph of a similar subject. Please identify that. I should say the second, the last one I showed was 846. This is 847. I see Mr. Jackson, Mark Schaffel, Aaron Carter and Rudy. And I believe the other gentleman is Brad Buxer. Okay. 
These three photographs, 847, 846, and 845, were you present when these photographs were shot? Actually, I think these are freeze frames of a video, if I'm correct. Yes. Yes, I was. Okay, so you actually observed these shots as they were being taken? That's correct. And exhibit 193, can you identify that for me? That's my house. Okay, that's one of the rooms in your home? That's correct. Which room? Well, it's a billiard room. All right, and 194? That's like a living room. In your home? In my house. All right, your honor, at this time I'd like to admit into evidence exhibit 847, 846, 845, 16. If it hasn't been admitted, 42, 39, 41, 27 and, I should say 27 and 844. No objection. All right, they're admitted. All right, you mentioned a few names that I'd like to ask you some questions about. And if I could have the Elmo, your honor. First of all, I'll show you people's exhibit 844. Is that the photograph that you said you shot of Mr. Jackson and Frank Cassio? That's correct. And where was that shot taken? I believe we were at Neverland Valley. All right, and do you know what the purpose of this shot was? I think it was just documentary. I show you exhibit number 23. You've identified this subject as Brad Miller. That's correct. Have you met Mr. Miller? Yes, I believe I did. Where did you meet Brad Miller? At my house. And when did you meet Brad Miller? I believe it was February 19, 2003. Exhibit 16. Who is that, please? Mark Schaffel. Exhibit 42? Stuart. Again, I'm not sure what his last name. How did you meet Stuart? At Mr. Schaffel's house, I believe. During what time frame? When did you first meet him? I would say between February 10th, approximately February 10th of 2003 till February 18th of 2003. Showing you exhibit 39 at this time, who is that? I believe it's Joe Marcus. And you know him to be associated how with Mr. Jackson? I believe he's the property manager of Neverland Valley. Exhibit 41, who is that? Miko Brando. How did you meet Miko Brando? I believe I met him at Neverland. People's Exhibit 17 you've identified as Mr. Weisner? Dieter Weisner. Okay. 18, is that Mr. Konitzer? Ronald Konitzer. And 27, who is that? Christian Robinson, I believe. All right, finally, showing you People's Exhibit 845, you've identified this as a video still? This is a freeze frame of a video. Okay, can I have the laser pointer, please? If you could use that laser pointer, Mr. Moslehi, and show us, identify for us, we know Mr. Jackson. You identified Mr. Schaffel in that photo. And you've also identified two individuals that you could not, that you did not recognize. Would you point the photo, or the laser at those two individuals? Indicating in the center and indicating to the right corner. And the individual who you've identified as Rudy, indicating on the left side in the white t-shirt. Showing you 847, please point out the various individuals in this photograph for us. And name them? That you recognize. Oh, Mark Schaffel. Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Aaron Carter. Who is Aaron Carter? He's an entertainer or a musician or a singer. Okay. I believe that's Rudy. Yes. And I believe that's Brad Buxer. Okay. Who is Brad Buxer? Mr. Jackson's musical director. All right. Same question for exhibit number 846. Would you identify the subjects in that photograph? Mr. Jackson. Yes. Nick Carter. Who is Nick Carter? Aaron Carter's brother, which is another musician or singer. Entertainer. All right. I believe that's Frank. Yes. I believe that's Shaffle. Uh-huh. And I believe that's Rudy. Okay. Appearing in the left-hand corner with the t-shirt? That's correct. And the individuals in the center of the photograph, you don't recognize them? I do not. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Moslehi, at some time during the early part of 2003, you said that, well, let me strike that. In 2003, 
Did you perform some video services for Michael Jackson in the early part of 2003? Yes, I did. And I believe you, first of all, characterized that you did some assistance in the Martin Bashir documentary in January, is that correct? Mid-January of 2003. Okay. Subsequent to that, did you perform some more, some additional video services for Mr. Jackson? Yes, I did. All right. And could you describe the first one? First, let me strike that. How many projects or individual shoots did you involve yourself in at the request of Mr. Jackson for the remainder of 2003? I would say five or six projects. Okay. Tell us about the first one. Tell me what, first of all, what was the subject matter of the first shoot, the first of those shoots? Well, I believe the very first project, if I'm not wrong, it was the Martin Bashir, which was. Yes. Mid-January of 2003. Yes. And what was the next one? Next one, I believe, was a shoot in Florida which never took place. Okay. Let's start with that one. Well, let me ask you this, first of all. Prior to that shoot in Florida, did you do any video, any other video production between the shoot, between going to Florida and the Martin Bashir documentary? I'm not sure. All right. Do you recall doing a video shoot on February 5, 2003? I think there was an interview with Debbie Rowe. All right. Where did that interview take place? At Mark Schaffel's house, Calabasas. When did you first learn that that was a project that Mr. Jackson wanted you to shoot? Maybe a day before. Who informed you of that? I'm not sure. Could have been Mr. Jackson's personal assistant or his new managers. Okay. Who were his new managers at that time? Ronald and Dieter. When did you first learn that Ronald and Dieter were Michael Jackson's new managers? I believe I had a meeting with them in late 2002. I would say November, December. Uh-huh. And they informed me that they were going to take the management from, I guess, the beginning of the year. Did Mr. Jackson ever confirm that, that they were his new managers? Not directly, but somehow indirectly. What do you mean? Once I called Mr. Jackson to ask him a question, and he asked me to call Dieter. Okay. Did he indicate what, who Dieter was, to why he wanted you to call Dieter? Why Mr. Jackson wanted to know. Why Mr. Jackson wanted you to call Dieter. Did Mr. Jackson tell you? Well, I think Dieter had the answer for whatever question I had. I'm not asking what you think. I'm asking you if Mr. Jackson told you why he wanted you to call Dieter. He didn't specifically told me why, but he just advised me to call Dieter. Do you know what the subject matter was? Do you remember the subject matter of that conversation? I don't remember. So you were instructed to do a video shoot of Debbie Rowe? That's correct. And where did that shoot take place? At Mr. at Mark Schaffel's house. Who told you to show up at Mark Schaffel's home? It could have been either Mr. Schaffel or Dieter. Just a moment. Off the record discussion held at council table. All right, going back to this video shoot, what was the purpose of it? The Debbie Rowe? Yes. I believe it was like a response for what the Martin Bashir documentary was about. Had the Martin Bashir documentary aired in the United States at that time? I don't think so, I'm not sure. All right. If I remember correctly, that documentary was aired on the 6th of February. Okay. Did you see the Martin Bashir documentary? Yes, I did. Where did you see it? Where were you when you saw it? I was in Florida. Do you specifically remember whether you shot the Debbie Rowe footage before you went to Florida? I believe, yes, the day before. The day before? The day before. All right, so whatever day you went to Florida, the day before that, you shot the Debbie Rowe footage? That's correct. Now, tell me. Who was at Mark Schaffel's home at the time this footage was shot? There was Debbie, another lady, the interviewer, which I forgot his name, Schaffel, Christian Robinson, me, and my crew. And what was Mr. Schaffel's role in this shoot? I believe some sort of producer. Okay, and specifically what did he do? He would have, like, a questionnaire in his hand to let the interviewer, what to ask. What did this questionnaire look like? Pieces of paper. Did the interviewer, who was the interviewer? I forgot his name. This is the fellow you can't remember his name? That's correct. 
And the interviewer, did he have any paper in his hands when he was asking the questions? During the interview, I don't remember seeing him having any paper in his hand. Would he ever confer with Mr. Shaffle about how this interview would proceed? Prior to this shoot or during the shoot? At any time. They had some interactions as far as, you know, what kind of questions to ask and so on. And how many times did they interact about how this interview was going to be conducted? Approximately? If you can recall, yeah, approximately. Six, seven times, maybe. How many times before the interview started did they have discussions of that nature? I'm not sure. And this interview, after you finished shooting it, what did you do with the footage? Mr. Shaffle took it. Did he take it on that day? Yes. It was in video format? That's correct. Okay, so you said the next day after that shoot, you went to Florida? That's correct. What city in Florida? Miami. And why did you go to Florida? I was informed that there's going to be some sort of video shoot. Who informed you of that? Either Mr. Jackson's personal assistant or Dieter. And when you say his personal assistant, do you mean Evie? That's correct. How long has Evie been his personal assistant, as far as you know? Years. Maybe 15 years. Something like that. Okay. She was his personal assistant when you began in, 96? That's correct. And were you informed of what the nature of this video shoot was going to involve in Florida? No, I was not. Were you informed of what type of equipment you would need? Video equipment. Anything else? Well, I usually take, like, my still camera, too. Did you have any employees with you? No. Okay, so tell me the arrangements that you made before you left for Florida, if any. Since I couldn't take anybody with me, if I remember correctly, I called a rental house, which they rent equipment and video equipment, and booked some equipment so when I get there, I have the proper equipment that I need. Then basically I grabbed all my equipment that I could carry by myself and flew to Florida. Where did you go when you arrived in Florida? I believe one of Mr. Jackson's drivers picked me up and they drove me to Mr. Jackson's hotel. Which hotel was that? I don't remember the name of the hotel. And where did you go when you arrived at the hotel? To my room. Okay. Did you meet with anybody at the hotel on that day? I met with Dieter and Ronald that day. Where did that meeting take place? I believe at their room. And what did that meeting consist of? What was it a meeting about? Mostly about just them taking over the management, they're the new managers, and the way they like to conduct business from now on. Okay. And also we had discussion about my unpaid invoices. Okay. Did you have some unpaid invoices at that time? I'm sorry? Did you have some unpaid invoices? Yes, I did. That were owed by MJJ Productions? Yes, I did. What kind of figure are we talking about at that time? How much money was owed to you, approximately? About $250,000. How long had you been owed that money? Well, this was like a year and a half worth of unpaid invoices, so it kept adding up. Would you bill as the invoices would accrue? I'm sorry? Would you make bills out and send them to Mr. Jackson's company? That's correct. As the bills would accrue when you do the work? Yeah. I would finish the work and render an invoice and mail it to Mr. Jackson's office. So, did you have any discussions with Mr. Konitzer and Mr. Weisner about what you were to do in Florida? I asked them what the purpose is. I guess they didn't know or they didn't want to let me know, but I was never informed specifically why I went there. But at one point I was informed that it's not going to happen. When did that happen? I believe was either the same day that I got there or it could be the same, the day after. Who told you that it wasn't going to happen? I believe Dieter. Did you see any other individuals there that you recognized from the previous shoot at Debbie Rose, at Mark Schaffel's house involving Debbie Rowe there in Florida when you were there? If I remember correctly, there were, I only met with Ronald and Dieter and Mr. Jackson's bodyguard. Who was that? At the time I believe it was Mike and another gentleman. What was the, what was their involvement, the two bodyguards? What did they have to do with this meeting? Objection. Foundation. Maybe I'll start over again. Was the meeting with the bodyguard separate from the meeting with Mr. Konitzer and Mr. Weisner? 
Well, it wasn't a meeting with them, but I met them there. I mean, I saw them there. Okay. You know. Did you talk to them? Yeah, casually. Did you ever see the individual who was the interviewer in the Debbie Rowe shoot in Florida while you were there? Not that I remember. Sorry? Not that I remember. Okay. Seeing him there. Did you see Mr. Jackson while you were in Florida? I don't believe I did. Did you receive any other instructions while you were in Florida from Mr. Weisner or Mr. Konitzer? Well, I informed them about having some footage of Martin Bashir, behind the scene documentary. And after discussing certain matters, they advised me to call Mark Schaffel. Did you call Mark Schaffel? Yes, I did. While you were in Florida? I believe so. Did you receive any instructions from Mr. Schaffel? He wanted me to come back to LA so I can show him the footage. Okay, did you do so? Yes, I did. When did that occur? I believe the day after. So you fly back to Los Angeles. You didn't do any photography at all in Miami? No. And then the next day you meet with Mr. Schaffel? That's correct. And what did Mr. Schaffel, what was that conversation about with Mr. Schaffel? If I remember correctly, I explained to him that I have, I have certain footage of behind the scene that I shot during Martin Bashir production, and that I have made some agreement and arrangement with Dieter and Ronald in regard to usage of this footage, and they asked me to see you. And then I showed him the footage, and that was it. Okay. Did you receive any further instructions from Mr. Schaffel during the month of February concerning any other shoots, video shoots? Some additional footage of Mr. Jackson's family interviews, some of Mr. Jackson's archival footage and so on. I'm talking specifically about new video footage that you shot in the month of February. Okay. At the request of Mr. Schaffel, did you shoot any such video? Well, there was some, I mean, there were a few projects within the same one project. Okay. Which contained footage and creating a new footage of certain people. Let's begin with what the nature of this new one project was. What was the purpose of this new one project? Was like, was a rebuttal documentary of the Martin Bashir documentary. And who did you take new video footage of for purposes of that documentary? I believe we shot Mr. Jackson's parents, including his brother. Where did that take place? At the Encino Place in California. Mr. Jackson's house. Joe Jackson's house in Encino. Okay. And do you know what date that video was shot? Approximately February 15th. All right. Any other video footage that you shot for this rebuttal film or this rebuttal documentary? We're talking new footage, right? Yes. New footage. Well, we shot some footage of the Arvizo family, but it never got used. Never got aired on the Fox. Okay. So let's talk about that. You were. Were you assigned to shoot video footage of the Arvizo family for purposes of this rebuttal video? That's correct. Who assigned you to that task? I believe was Mark Schaffel. Okay. Do you know? I think it was Mark Schaffel. Okay. And were you instructed the nature of this video? What this video footage would be about involving the Arvizo family? Well, this footage were supposed to be used in that rebuttal documentary that Martin Bashir basically originally did. So. Okay. Was this rebuttal film, did this rebuttal film have a public relations purpose? Sure. What was the public relations purpose? Well, to make Mr. Jackson look good. Okay. And so what was the purpose, or let me strike that. Were you ever informed as to what the purpose of taking video footage of the Arvizo family was? What was the purpose for taking footage of the Arvizo family? Well, in the Martin Bashir documentary there was a shot of Gavin, I believe, and Mr. Jackson holding hands, which it created some sort of controversy about it. And we were trying to show that basically there was nothing between Mr. Jackson and Gavin that they were saying on the media and news and stuff like that. I'm not sure I understand. There was nothing that, that they were saying? Well, just to rebuke, sick. That shot that. Basically Mr. Jackson holding the hand of Gavin. We were putting this family in front of a camera just to see what they have to say and use it in that rebuttal documentary. Did you discuss this video shooting with Mr. Schaffel? Of the Arvizo family? Yes. Sure. Was it anticipated at all that this video would be a positive thing for Mr. Jackson? Sure. How so? 
How was it anticipated that this was going to be good for, make Mr. Jackson look good? Well, the footage that I shot of Martin Bashir during Martin Bashir production, there were a lot of segments or scenes that Mr. Bashir was saying. I'm going to interrupt you as not. Objection to interrupting the witness. It's non-responsive. It is responsive, I believe, your honor. It is. I'll allow you to finish the question, or the answer. Do you want me to have the part read that you answered? I'm sorry, say that again? I'm going to allow you to finish your answer. Do you want to hear the first part of your answer? I forgot what I was talking about. Read him the part of his answer. I'm sorry, your honor, my question dealt with the previous question of the video of the Arvizos. It was not a general question about the video, the whole video. I'll let her read the question. All right. How so? How was it anticipated that this was going to be good for, make Mr. Jackson look good? Now you can finish your answer. Continuing, that Mr. Bashir was saying good thing about Michael Jackson. Okay, I'm going to go back to my, what I intended to ask or make. How was the Arvizo family footage anticipated? How was it anticipated that this would help Mr. Jackson to look good, in your discussions with Mr. Schaffel? Well, I mean, at that time, I don't think, there was no footage of the Arvizo, but we were supposed to shoot this footage. Right, I'm talking about the planning of it. You planned to shoot the Arvizo family, correct? Correct. The plan was to do a video, a rebuttal video, that would make Mr. Jackson look good? Overall, the plan of the rebuttal documentary was to make, basically make Mr. Jackson look good. Was shooting the Arvizo family something you did to try and make Mr. Jackson look good in this rebuttal film? Well, at the time, I didn't know how the final piece would look, because we were still in the production phase of this whole production. Once it's edited and you look at it, then you can, you know, basically decide whether that's going to make him look good or not. Let's just move on. The, where was this? Originally where was this video shoot to take place? At Neverland. And whose idea was that? I believe was Mark Schaffel. Okay. Did you ever go to Neverland to do this shoot? Yes, I did. When was that? February 19, 2003. Did you bring any assistants with you, any assistants with you? I took two people, crew, with me. What time did you arrive at Neverland? I would say late afternoon, early evening. 7 o'clock-ish, kind of. 6 o'clock-ish. Did you contact any members of the Arvizo family at Neverland that day? I saw the three kids at Neverland, and I told them that, we're supposed to shoot an interview with you guys. Okay, the three kids, Gavin, Star and Develin? That's correct. Was Janet at Neverland that day? She was not. Was there any plan to shoot this video with Janet in it? Yes, it was. So did you make an effort to determine where Janet was? I asked the kids where their mom is. Okay, what happened next? They said, she's not here. What did you do after that? I asked them if they know where she is, because we're supposed to set up this lighting and camera equipment and do the interview. They, I believe they told me that, she's not here, and they're going to, I asked them if they can call her to see if she's going to do it or not, or what's the schedule. During that period, did you have any contact with Mr. Schaffel concerning this problem of the mother not being there? Objection. Misstates the evidence. Move to strike. Overruled. You may answer. Did I have any conversation with Schaffel? I believe so. Okay. Tell me about it. Did you contact Mr. Schaffel? I believe either he called me or I called him. I'm not sure. But there was a conversation saying that, Janet, the mother, is not here. And what was Mr. Schaffel's, did Mr. Schaffel have a solution to this issue? I guess not at. Objection. Hearsay. Offered in furtherance. First of all, that requires a, yes, or, no, answer. Okay, fair enough. Did Mr. Schaffel have a solution of this issue of Janet not being there where you intended to shoot the video involving the entire family? Not at the time, I guess. It was just information going back and forth. Okay. At some point while you were at Neverland, did you talk to Janet Arvizo on the phone? Yes, I did. Had you previously met Janet Arvizo? Yes, I believe I did. Okay. When had you previously met her? Where? Where, 
Let's say where? At Neverland Valley. Okay. Was that during one of the shoots that you had done with the Arvizo family before, the Arvizo kids? The year 2001? Yes. I don't think so. Okay. It was maybe a birthday party of Mr. Jackson's kids or things like that. Okay. Did you make any efforts to get Janet to come to Neverland to do the shoot? If I remember correctly, I had a conversation on the phone with her. Yes. And I asked her whether she was going to do it or not so that I know what my schedule would be for that day. Okay. Did she want to do this video shoot? Objection. Foundation. Calls for speculation. It's offered. Foundation. Sustained. Okay. Did she describe to you whether or not she was willing to do the rebuttal video shoot? I believe at the beginning she was not happy to do this rebuttal video. Okay. Did she tell you why she didn't, was not happy about it? Um. Objection. Hearsay. Offered for state of mind. Well, the question is, did she tell you why she was not happy? But without telling us any more, did she? Did she tell you that, whether or not she was happy? She told me that she's not happy. Okay. So the court will allow that for the limited purposes of her state of mind at that time. So my follow-up question, did she tell you, and this is, yes, or, no. Did she tell you what she was unhappy about, why she was unhappy about doing the rebuttal filming or video? I believe yes, she did. What did she tell you? Objection. Hearsay. Offered for state of mind. I'll admit this, her statement, for the limited purpose of her state of mind, not the truth of the matter asserted in the statement. You may answer. All right, go ahead and answer that question. Did she tell me why she didn't want to do it? Yes. She said since, if I remember correctly, she said since the rebuttal documentary of Martin Bashir has aired, her life turned upside down because of the, you know, media and press following her, and that kind of stuff. And if I remember correctly, she said, the last thing I want to do is do another video, you know, and expose myself to more hassle. Did she want her children to be in another video? I'm not sure. Was that any part of her concern? Yeah, yeah. Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Did you make any efforts to persuade her to make this video? If I remember correctly, I told her that we're doing this rebuttal documentary and... That's really a, yes, or, no, question. I'm sorry. Say that again, the question. Yeah. Did you make any efforts to persuade her to do the rebuttal video, the rebuttal video involving? Yes. This segment? Yes. And what was your purpose in doing that? So I can get the production done. Okay. How long did you talk to her on the phone? I would say 20 minutes, approximately 20. And was that 20 minutes largely? Did that deal with anything other than persuading her to agree to do the video? Did you talk about anything else? She talked, me or her are both parties. No, you said you were having a conversation. She's reluctant, true? You're persuading her. Was there anything, any discussion, other than her coming to do the video, during that 20-minute phone conversation? Not that I remember. All right. When you finished the phone conversation, had Janet Arvizo agreed to do anything? I believe she agreed to do this video finally. Do you have a specific recollection whether she agreed to it or not? I believe she did. What did she say? Did she say, you tell me? I believe she said that she's going to do it. I mean, after we hung up, my understanding was that this is going to happen at one point. Where was it going to happen? I didn't know at the time. So she said she'd do it, but she didn't say she would do it that day? Well, there was not specific conversation about how, when, where it's going to happen. But I think, if I remember correctly, the conversation end up that it's going to happen. My understanding, if I remember correctly at the time, was that she's coming to Neverland to get it done. Okay, so at the end of the conversation, you believe Janet's agreed and she's going to come to Neverland to do the film? As I remember, yes. About what time is it at this point? I would say 9 o'clock-ish, 10 o'clock-ish, at night. At some point did you learn or decide? Let me strike that, start over. At some point did you decide that the filming was not going to take place that night at Neverland? I'm sorry, say that again. Me deciding, or? Yes. 
Well, I was informed it's not going to happen at Neverland. Okay. Who informed you of that? I believe it was Mark Schaffel. You believe? Well, Mark Schaffel, I think. It was Mark Schaffel. And how did you hear from Mark Schaffel that that was not going to take place at Neverland that night? I believe it was a phone conversation. So you had, was this the first phone conversation? Second? You tell me. I believe could be second. And did you receive some instructions from Mr. Schaffel regarding the filming on that second phone conversation? If I remember correctly, he informed me that Janet, the mom, is going to, is going to be in LA she's in LA therefore, we're going to shoot this in LA he asked me if I can shoot that in my house. I respond to him that if we can shoot it at his house, but then he said he doesn't want them to remember where he lives. So we ended up shooting at my house. Mr. Schaffel said he didn't want who to know where he lived? I believe the family. So what did you do then? I informed my crew that this production will not take, this shoot will not take place at Neverland. I let them know that they should pack the equipment. And then I got the three kids and we drove back to my house. After you spoke to Mr. Schaffel and learned that the shoot was going to take place at your house, did you have a conversation with Joe Marcus, the Neverland ranch manager? If I remember correctly, I, when I arrived at Neverland, I let him know why I'm there, to shoot this interview. Then later, I informed him that it's not going to happen here at Neverland, it's going to be at my house, and I'm taking the kids with me. Did you tell him that you were going to do the shoot with the mother and the kids? I believe so. What was Mr. Marcus's reaction when you told him that you wanted to take the kids off of Neverland? Objection. Hearsay. Offered in furtherance. All right. I'm going to admit it for the limited purposes previously discussed on the conspiracy issue. What did Mr. Marcus tell you when you informed him that, of your intent to take the children? I believe he said. To your home? I believe he said, they're not allowed to leave the property. You believe that or did? I did. Do you remember what he said? I remember he said, they're not allowed to leave the property. At some point did you confront him with the intent or did you confront him with the necessity to have the children go down to your home to complete the video shoot? Well, at one point I believe I informed him that the video that we were supposed to shoot at Neverland, it's not going to take place, and it's going to be at my house. Uh-huh. So the kids are coming with me. Did he agree to anything at that time during that first conversation with you in terms of letting the kids off the property? He agreed? Yes. Did he agree with you about anything during that first conversation you had with Joe Marcus where he told you that the kids are not allowed off of the property? What do you mean, did he agree? Do you mean letting them go with me, or? Yes. I don't remember hearing anything from him. Okay, what did you do then? Then I let the kids know that within, like, 15 minutes we're going to take off, so get your stuff ready. What did you do in the next 15 minutes? If I remember correctly, I went to help my crew so we can pack the car, the equipment back to the car, and take off. Did you see Joe Marcus again before you left Neverland? I believe I did. Did you talk to him about getting the kids off the property? I'm not sure if I had a conversation with him about that, but he saw me leaving. Alright, so you were allowed to leave Neverland when you drove off the property, when you wanted to leave the property? Yeah, that's right. And how much time went by between the time that you first told Joe Marcus, or when Joe Marcus first told you the kids are not allowed off Neverland and the time that you actually drove off of Neverland? I would say approximately half an hour. When you went down to the theater to collect your equipment, where was? Where did Joe Marcus go, or where was he? I don't know. Did he come with you? No. Do you know if he had any conversations with anybody during that meantime? I'm not sure. All right, so you took the kids, personally you loaded them up in one of the vehicles? That's correct. How many vehicles? I took two vehicles of mine to Neverland. Okay, and which vehicle did the kids go in? I had a Suburban for the equipment and the crew, and a BMW for myself, basically. Okay, which one did the kids go in? The BMW. And you drove that? That's correct. And did you drive straight to your home? That's correct. About what time was it when you ultimately arrived at your home? Approximately 11 o'clock-ish. And what did the children do during the drive down from Santa Barbara? 
We had some little conversations, and they went to sleep. Your home is in Calabasas? West Hills. West Hills. So you arrived at your home about 11 o'clock. What did you do then? I immediately started loading equipment to the area that I was going to shoot, and let the kids play with video games and things like that. Do you have some video games at your home? Yeah. Some fancy ones? Not really. Okay, so they played video games? That's right. All three of them? I guess the guys. She was. I don't know what she was doing. I don't remember exactly, but she was there, too. Did they stay in one area of the house during that period? Yeah. And were your two assistants still with you? Yes, they were. Was there anybody else at the house when you first arrived, other than you, your assistants and the Arviso kids? No, just us. Did someone arrive at the house shortly thereafter? Yes. Who was that? Who was the first person to arrive? I believe was Christian Robinson, and another gentleman by the name of Paul, which is an associate of Mark Schaffel. Had you met Paul before? Yes. On what occasion? In the year 2001, Mr. Jackson did the project, What More Can I Give? And Paul was involved somehow with that production helping Schaffel. Did you set up your equipment for the shoot? At my house, yeah. During that period, did anybody else show up at the house after Christian and Paul arrived? Another gentleman, I believe was Brad Miller. Did he arrive by himself? I believe so, yes. Had you ever seen Brad Miller before? No. Have you ever seen him since that night? No, on TV, I guess, once. And he arrived by himself? I believe so. Did you have any understanding of what Brad Miller was doing at your home that night? No, and I remember asking Christian who this guy is, and they said, don't worry about it. It's just a private detective. Have you ever done any video shoots where there was a private detective invited to watch at a home that the shoot occurred at? No. Did you ever see Brad Miller do anything that evening? He was walking around my house. Did anybody else arrive at your home? Vinny and the mother. Janet Arviso? That's correct. Do you know about what time they arrived? I would say towards midnight. All right, so how is the preparation going at this point for the video shoot? Well, me and my crew were setting up the lighting. Mainly I'm doing the lighting, background, sound and that kind of stuff. They're bringing the equipment in. Sorry. And Janet was getting her makeup done. And the kids were just, you know, playing with games and stuff like that. Did anybody do Janet's makeup for her? I don't believe, she did her own makeup. And how did you feel at this point about this scene, if you can characterize it in terms of the time, the people? Was there anything unusual about this? Well, timing was a little, you know, kind of getting late. Also having Brad Miller in my house, I didn't really feel comfortable. Had you met Vinny before? Yes. And prior to the shooting of the video, did you become aware of any problems that Janet had? Any additional problems that Janet expressed concerning the shooting of the video? I think there was a problem with the contract or the release that they were asking her to sign. Okay. And if I remember correctly, Vinny asked me to use my fax machine and that kind of things. And you say, they, were having a problem with her? Objection. Misstates the evidence. Well, I believe you said, they were asking her to sign. Who were, they? I believe it was Paul and Vinny and potentially Christian Robinson. Okay, so if I could have the Elmo briefly, your honor. I'm showing you again exhibit number 194 which you previously identified as your home. Can you identify that perspective for me? Yeah, this is a view of my living room. And does this area, does this photograph depict any area of the part of your home that was used in the video shoot? That's correct. Which area? Explain it to me. This is where I set up the background. Aha. Uh -huh. I believe the family were sitting approximately in this area. And my camera was like, it's off of this frame, but about this area. You've indicated the background was in the center of the carpeting, the carpet, or I should say rug. Right about there. And then the seating area was at the front, between the two carpets? About there. The two rugs. And then your camera was down outside the frame of the picture? Outside this frame. Below it. Okay. And where were the boys in Develin during the period of the downtime when you were preparing the video shoot? 
That's my TV setup, so that's where they were sitting. It's like a little coffee table and a little video game stuff. Where was the discussion that was taking place between Janet, Paul, Vinny and possibly Christian? In the other room, which is out of this frame. Showing you exhibit 193, would you identify that area? That's, well, like a billiard room, kind of. Is that the area you're saying that the conversation took place in? That's correct. Now, you said you have a fax machine? That's correct. Where is your fax machine in your home? Upstairs. I have three rooms upstairs, and one of them's an office. Do you know which of those individuals went upstairs? I believe you said Vinny went and used the fax. Anybody else? Not that I remember. I think it was Vinny. Thank you. So how much time passed between the time that Janet arrived at your home and the time that you started shooting the video? I would say a couple of hours, approximately. How much time went by in which Janet was? How long did this discussion take place between Janet, Vinny, Paul and possibly Christian? I would say half an hour. How much time did it take for you to set up the video equipment? I would say hour to hour and a half. Did you hear any of the conversation between Janet and these other parties about the consent form? Did I hear any conversation? Yeah. You told us the general context of the conversation. Did you hear any specifics about what the issue was about signing this consent? No, I did not. Can you tell me what Janet's demeanor was? What was her, what was her mood like? How did she act about this? About the Objection. Foundation. Well, that's fine. I can lay a better foundation. You mentioned that Janet had a problem with signing the consent form. That's correct. Why do you say that? What do you base that on? Because I observed that they're looking at the contract, and she was going through it, and there was some, I guess, words that she was not happy with or the content of this contract. And then at one point Vinny asked me to use my fax machine, I guess to get faxed in or out, to redraft that contract, some sort. During that period of time that you were observing Janet and these individuals, did you have a chance to see what her demeanor was like? Do you know what I mean by, demeanor? Yeah, like an attitude? Yeah, what was her attitude like? Um. Did you have a chance to notice that? I was very busy setting up equipment, so I didn't really pay attention to each individual's, you know. Right. Attitude or whatever. She was, I guess, normal. I guess, I don't know. Did she seem happy about it? Um. About this thing they wanted her to sign? She wasn't happy about the assignment, or I mean the contract that she wanted to sign, as I understood. So ultimately you do the video shoot? Yes. Do you know if she signed anything that night? I believe she did. Did you see her sign something? No, I did not. Okay, why do you say you think she did? Because it looks like Mark's people were happy. Okay. So. So you do the video shoot. Was it a continuous shoot or were there segments? I believe we shot one hour interview, and each of these professional tapes are 30 minutes. I don't believe there were so many cuts in it, so we continued rolling camera, basically. Maybe one or two cuts in between, if any. So how much video footage did you shoot total? I would say approximately an hour. At the conclusion of the, of this project, when you finished shooting it, what happened? After you finished it, you've got the videotape. What happened next? Well, we wrapped equipment and everybody left. Okay. Did you see who left with whom? Not specifically, no. Did you provide the videotape that you had shot to anybody, any member of the group that had come from, well, did you give that tape to anybody that night? Let me just put it that way. No, I didn't. Did anybody want that tape? Objection. Calls for speculation. Vague. Foundation. I can ask the question a little better. All right. Did somebody ask you for that tape? I believe Paul, Mark Schaffel's associate. Was there a discussion with Paul about him getting the tape that night? He asked me to turn him, turn over the tapes to him. Yes. And I refused. Did anybody else ask you to turn those tapes over, other than Paul? Maybe Christian. Okay. I'm not sure. Why did you refuse to turn the tapes over? Well, first of all, I wanted to make a copy so in case, as insurance, to have a second copy of that tape. Also, there was some other issues that were not resolved by then, so I kind of kept the tape for that. 
At the conclusion of the evening, did you spend some time with Janet, any time privately with Janet? Yes, I did. When did that occur in relationship to the end of the video shoot and everybody leaving? It was towards the end of when everybody was leaving. At the end of the shoot. Do you remember who was still at the home at that time? Everybody was there. Did you have a purpose in meeting her separately? Yeah. What was your purpose? I, I remember I gave her, like, alone. Okay. What was, let me back up. During the period of time that you first became acquainted with the Arvizos to the time of this shoot, how many separate meetings would you say you had with the Arvizo family? Including the kids? Yeah. Six, seven. Did you get to know them? Yeah. How did you feel about the Arvizo family? Objection. Vague. Foundation. Relevance. Sustained. Did you at some point that night decide to give Janet Arvizo a loan based on your own desire? Did I decide? Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Did Janet Arvizo ever ask you for any money? No. Did she ever request anything from you? No. All right. We'll take our break now. All right.